Hey there, Brain Stuff, I'm Lauren Vogelbaum. And did you know that some people smoke scorpions? Not only that, but some people let themselves be stung on purpose because it gets them high. Just a little perspective here before we get into the science. Being stung by an Arizona bark scorpion, just one of more than a thousand species, reportedly feels like getting burnt with a cigarette and then driving a nail into the wound. So what exactly is in scorpion venom that makes people get high? And can that stuff be put to less frivolous use? The actual drug usage of scorpions is mainly happening in Afghanistan, Pakistan, and India. There aren't any statistics on how prevalent it is, but narcotics control officers have reported that it's not rare. Reportedly, each hit, or sting, costs somewhere between 75 and 200 rupees, or between one and three US dollars. Basically, after a payment, you hold a scorpion in your hand, and your dealer hits it gently with a stick, and it gets mad and stings you. But if someone's going to smoke a scorpion, that takes a little bit more doing. First, they've got to dry a dead scorpion in sunlight or burn it alive on a hot coal stove. Some users inhale the smoke coming off of the fire, but the burnt tail is where the venom's at. Users mix that with some hashish and tobacco and then smoke it like a cigarette or possibly in a small pipe. Users report that its effects are more powerful than heroin. They say that for the first six hours, it's very painful as your body adjusts to the toxins, but then it eases into a floating euphoria where you're still alert. Different species of scorpions are said to have different psychoactive properties. One might keep you awake, while another may cause hallucinations, or give you severe headaches. The high is said to last anywhere from 10 hours to 3 days. But keep in mind that scorpion venom is very dangerous. 25 scorpion species are known to have venom that's fatal to human beings. Smoking venom from the ones that won't kill you can still cause short and long-term memory loss, sleeping and appetite disorders, and a constant state of delusion. This is because scorpion venom is a complex cocktail of toxic proteins and peptides that are designed to target parts of their prey's bodies and shut them down. Some paralyze messages between the nervous system and the muscles. Others corrode molecules, causing cell tissue to break apart. Others clot the blood, or prevent it from clotting. But these same chemical properties are why scorpion venom is also being used and researched for medical treatments. Right now, drugs based on these toxins have yet to be approved, but they could be a big part of the future of pharmacology. Chinese medicine has made use of scorpion venom to treat pain for centuries. Development of painkillers based on scorpion venom could potentially provide relief outside of more addictive opioid-based medicines like oxycodone. Even brain cancer treatments are being developed from scorpion venom. Specifically, they fight high-grade gliomas, a form of brain cancer so aggressive that only 8% of its patients survive two years past diagnosis. But the venom from the yellow Israeli scorpion, aka the Death Stalker, may help. A protein in the venom selectively attaches to glioma cells. Synthesized versions of these venom proteins can carry therapy particles straight to the cancer to kill it, slow its spread, or light it up with an infrared dye to help surgeons remove it all. So scorpion venom's not all bad, is it? at least under the right circumstances. But I've got to ask, would you let someone use scorpion venom on you to treat an illness? Let us know in the comments. And for more on drugs, deadly animals, and weird medicine, visit us at HowStuffWorks.com.